Welcome to the Electric Service Center. Today, we will be unboxing and setting up your new Electric XP. Before we get started, you'll need to make sure you have some tools ready to go. You will need a screwdriver, an 8mm wrench, a 14mm socket, a 17mm long socket, a 2.5mm Allen wrench, a 3mm Allen wrench, a 4mm Allen wrench, a 5mm Allen wrench, and an 8mm Allen wrench, an 8mm Allen socket, a 5mm Allen socket, a 3mm Allen socket, and a 2.5mm Allen socket. You will also need a hand ratchet, a large torque wrench, a small torque wrench, a box cutter, an air pump, shop rags, and isopropyl alcohol. For this section, you'll need a box cutter. The Electric X Peak is 82 pounds in box, so if you need, have a friend help you carry the bike to where you will be opening it. There are handles punched out on either side of the box to help you carry it. Before you begin unboxing the bike, make sure the box is right side up based on the arrows pointing up printed on the box. On the box, you will see tape on the top and down both sides. Use the box cutter to cut all this tape. Also, be careful while you are cutting, as there may also be staples holding the box flaps together. Once the tape is cut, you can move on to pulling the flaps apart. Printed on the box are steps to help you know which order to unfold the box. Following step 1, you can pull the top flap up by pulling on the two tabs on either side of the box. Then, following step 2, pull out the two side flaps. This will free up the front panel of the box. You can let the front flap fall to the ground. A quick note, your bike might look a little different in the box depending on accessories that were purchased with the bike, but the unboxing process will be exactly the same. We recommend leaning the box up against a wall or having a friend hold up the bike so it does not fall over when you are removing the packing material. There are a few boxes sitting on top of the X-Peak that help keep the bike stable during the shipping process. You can remove these. The two boxes under the handlebar have components in them, so you can keep them in the box for now. You can now begin to remove the packing material. All the packing material is held together with string or tape. Simply untie the string or pull the tape to free the packing material. Around the bike you will see yellow safety tags. Do not remove these while removing the packing material, as we will go over these later. Behind the frame of the bike, you will see the front wheel tied down. Untie all the ties and pull the wheel out of the box. You can set it aside for now. We will be installing it later. You can continue to remove all the packing material from your X-Peak. Along with all the packing material, you will also see a smaller box up by the handlebars. Inside this box, there is a battery charger, a set of pedals, and any small accessories that might come with your XP. Under that box is a larger box that might have a front fender in it if you ordered your XP with fenders. You can go ahead and remove those boxes and put them off to the side. On the front fork, there is information about installing the through axle. You can remove this and keep it for future reference. Now you can finish removing the rest of the packing material. Finally, slide out the box that is pinched on the rear wheel for balance. Now that all packing boxes and materials are removed, you can lift the X-Peak out of the box.
Now, we will be installing the front wheel that we set aside earlier. Remove the hub end cap from the hub. Then the shipping cover off the brake rotor. Now, remove the caliper shim out of the hydraulic brake caliper. You can hang on to this for future use if you ever need to remove the front wheel. Now, unscrew the through axle by placing the handle in the handle notch and twisting counterclockwise until you are able to pull it out of the fork. Now, using your friend, lift the bike and insert the wheel into the front fork. We find it easiest to pinch the wheel between your legs, then move the fork to the axle of the wheel. It is important to be careful of the brake rotor and caliper when installing the wheel. Make sure to slide the rotor into the caliper without bumping the caliper or the pads. Once the holes from the fork and the axle line up, insert the through axle through all the holes. Place the handle in the handle notch and screw it in clockwise. Keep tightening it until you're unable to tighten it anymore. Then fold the lever over. Make sure the lever folds over so it is either parallel to the fork or facing back, like this. This is so the lever does not catch on anything while you're riding your X-Peak. Now that the front wheel is installed, you can place the kickstand down and let the bike stand on its own. For this section, you'll need a box cutter. Grab the smaller of the two boxes you set aside earlier and open it. Inside will be your battery charger, your pedals, and any other small accessories you might have ordered with your X-Peak. Right now, we will be installing the pedals. Remove the pedals from the plastic casing and bring them down to your crank arms. Both pedals are marked with which side they are to be installed on. The pedal with an R on it is to be installed on the right side of the bike, or the drive side. And the pedal with the L on it is to be installed on the left side of the bike, or the non-drive side. To install the pedal, insert the pedal stem into the locking collar. Pull the locking collar, then let go of the locking collar. Pull on the pedal to make sure that it is properly locked into place. Repeat this process on the other side of the bike. For this section, you will need an air pump. You might notice that the bike is not currently very stable. This can be fixed by pumping up the tires. The recommended PSI can be found on the sidewall of the tire. The recommended PSI for the X-Peak tire is 20 PSI. Unscrew the Schrader valve cap. Insert the valve stem into the pump nozzle. And begin filling the tire. While filling, make sure to keep an eye on the bead of the tire to make sure that it does not unseat itself during the filling process. Repeat this process on the other tire. If you would like more information about seating and filling your tire, please watch this video on Electric E-Bike's YouTube channel. Now that your bike is sturdy, let's take a second to look at your bike's serial number. The serial number is pressed into the head tube. We recommend keeping this number for your records and also registering your bike at bikeindex.org in the event that your bike is lost or stolen. Now, you can take some time to familiarize yourself with the information on the safety tags throughout the bike. On each safety tag, you will see a QR code. This QR code will take you to the XPeak user's manual when scanned. Once you are familiar with the safety tags and user's manual, you can remove the safety tags from the bike. For this section, you'll need a box cutter and a 4mm Allen wrench. Now, if you ordered fenders with your X-Peak, the rear fenders will come pre-installed. 
but you will need to install the front fender. If you do not have a fender to install, you can skip forward in this video. If you do have a front fender to install, open the box and remove the packing material from the front fender. Down at the front fork, there will be a 4mm bolt on either side that will need to be removed with a 4mm Allen wrench. On the fork brace, there is another 4mm bolt that needs to be removed with a 4mm Allen wrench. Now, remove the shipping cover off the fender hanger and line the hanger up with the bolt hole on the fork brace. Then, using a 4mm Allen wrench, screw in the 4mm bolt. Now, line up the hole on one side of the fender stay with the bolt hole on the fork. A note, the longer portion of the fender should be at the rear of the wheel. Using a 4mm Allen wrench, screw the 4mm bolt through the fender stay and into the fork. Repeat this process on the other side of the fork. Once the bolts are fully screwed in, go ahead and tighten each one fully down to make sure there will be no movement or rattling while riding. For this section, you will need a 5mm Allen wrench, a 5mm Allen socket, a torque wrench, and a 17mm long socket. Now, we will check to make sure that the wheel is aligned correctly. It should be straight, but in the case that it's somehow twisted during the shipping process, you can easily straighten it back out. Step over the bike and look down at the handlebars and front wheel. Make sure the stem is straight with the front wheel and the handlebars are equal to the crown of the fork. If either of these are not true, you will need to perform a steering alignment. Step to the front of your X-Peak and unscrew the stem pinch bolts using a 5mm Allen wrench. Then, with the front wheel pinched between your legs, twist the handlebars until everything is lined up with the center of the frame and the handlebars are square with the front fork. Tighten the pinch bolts back down. Then use a 5mm Allen socket and a small torque wrench to torque them down to 6 to 8 newton meters. The next thing you will need to check is the tightness of your rear axle nuts. Using a 17mm long socket and a torque wrench, make sure the nuts are tightened down to 35 newton meters. For this section, you will need a 3mm Allen wrench and an 8mm wrench. Now that your X-Peak is out of the box, we can move on to setting up the electronics of the bike. You will notice that there is a quick plug at the front of the handlebars that is unplugged. This is the display quick plug. It is unplugged to prevent power drain during the shipping process. Go ahead and plug in the quick plug by pushing the male and female end in together. Make sure not to twist. You will notice plugged in when you hear a click and you can no longer see the color on the inside. Next, you will see that the headlight and reflector are pointing straight down. Lift the light so it is pointing a little less than straight out from the front of the bike. Then, use a 3mm Allen wrench and an 8mm wrench to tighten the headlight mount bolt to 2 to 4 newton meters. For this section, you will need a 3mm Allen wrench, a 2.5mm Allen wrench, a 5mm Allen wrench, a 5mm Allen socket, a torque wrench, and a screwdriver. Now, we will adjust the components of the cockpit on your electric X-Peak. Using a 3mm Allen wrench, loosen the two bolts on the mount of the display. Adjust it to a comfortable position when standing over the bike, then tighten them back down.
Tighten the bolts tight enough so the display does not move while you are riding. Next, using a 2.5mm Allen wrench, do the same thing with the button pad. Now, if needed, you can adjust the brake levers. Using a 5mm Allen wrench, loosen the 5mm bolt and adjust the brake to a comfortable position. Then, tighten the bolt back down. Then, torque the bolt down with a 5mm Allen socket to 6 to 8 Newton meters. Repeat this process on the other brake lever. Next, if needed, you can adjust the thumb throttle. Using a 3mm Allen wrench, loosen the bolt on the back of the thumb throttle. Adjust it to a comfortable position. Tighten the bolt back down. Then, torque it down to 1 Newton meter with a 3mm Allen socket. Finally, if needed, you can adjust the shifter. Using a screwdriver, loosen the screw on the bottom of the shifter, adjust it to a comfortable position, then tighten it back down. Now, you will see a set of keys connected to the handlebars. Untie them and insert them into the keyhole on the frame of the bike. We will now be plugging in the battery to charge it up while we finish setting up the bike. Electric sends its batteries 50% charge so you only need half the time to charge it full before your first ride. When a battery is fully out of charge though, it will take roughly 6 hours to fully charge back up. To remove the battery, unlock it by turning the key counterclockwise. This will drop the battery down about a half an inch. Press the secondary release button on the bottom of the battery and it will drop out of the battery slot. If you haven't already, open the charger box. Unpack the charger. And plug the wall port into the charger. Now, plug your charger into the charger port on the battery. Then plug the charger into the wall. The light on the charger box will turn red. This means the battery is charging. When the light turns green, that means the battery is fully charged. If you would like, you can also charge the battery while it is still plugged into the bike by plugging the charger into the charging port while it is still in the bike. While your battery charges, we will go over some of the mechanical components of the bike. For this section, you will need isopropyl alcohol and a clean rag. First, you will need to clean the brake rotors. This will clear the rotors of any debris or contaminants that might have gotten on the rotor during the shipping process. Using isopropyl alcohol and a clean rag, wipe down the entire rotor. You will repeat this process on the other brake rotor. Now, let's inspect the brakes for safety. First, pull on the brake levers as far as you can. Make sure that the levers are not touching your fingers or the bars themselves. While the levers are pulled, you'll need to perform a rock test. Rock the bike back and forth. If the bike moves back and forth at all, you may need to perform a brake adjustment. Watch this brake adjustment video on Electric eBike's YouTube channel and learn how to do that. For this section, you'll need a hand ratchet, a 14mm socket, and a torque wrench. Now, we will move down to the saddle and seat post. You can adjust the angle of the saddle to better suit your style of riding. To adjust the angle, use a hand ratchet and a 14mm socket to loosen the bolts on either side of the saddle rails. Then, adjust the angle of the saddle to a comfortable position.
Then tighten the bolts back down. Make sure to torque them down to 10 newton meters with a torque wrench. Then, you'll need to make sure that the C-post is inserted past the minimum insertion point. You can tell the minimum insertion point by the markings near the bottom of the C-post. We will adjust the C-post height later on. Now, you may need to tighten the C-post clamp. Do this by tightening the bolt connected to the C-post clamp. Tighten it enough so that when closing the clamp, there is an imprint left on the palm of your hand. Also, that the C-post stays up while you're seated on the saddle. The final check you'll need to perform is simply a visual inspection. If you notice anything that seems wrong or out of the ordinary, please contact our customer support team before your first ride. Now, we will learn how to actually work the bike. When your battery is done charging, remove the charger and make sure the battery is awake. The battery will enter sleep mode after 48 hours of inactivity. On the top of the battery, you will see a button. Press this to wake the battery up. The light will turn blue if the battery is fully charged. If the battery is not fully charged, it will flash green. And if the battery has no charge, the light will turn red. Insert the bottom of the battery into the base of the frame. Then, push up the top of the battery until you hear an audible click and the battery is flush with the frame. Your X-Peak should be powered and ready to turn on. To turn the bike on, hold the power button on the control pad for 3 seconds. This will turn on the display. Once the display is on and active, it will show several different data fields. Up top, it'll show you the estimated battery life. Below that, you'll see a speedometer. Underneath that is the pedal assist level, and on the bottom, there are five different data fields that can be cycled through by tapping the power button. You can also access the settings of the bike via the control pad. Hold down the plus and the minus button simultaneously for three seconds. You will be taken to a screen that shows 0, 1, and P with numbers at the bottom. This is how you know you are in the settings. If you would like in-depth information about the settings of your bike, please reference the user's manual on electricebikes.com or watch this video on Electric eBikes YouTube channel. You can also turn your lights on with the control pad. Simply hold the plus button until the light icon has appeared on your display and your headlight and taillight illuminate. To turn them off, hold the plus button until they turn off. Your X-Peak is also equipped with a thumb throttle. However, the throttle will not activate unless the bike is at least in pedal assist 1. You can also change your pedal assist level via the button pad. Simply tap the plus button and the minus button to find the pedal assist level you are looking for. All electric e-bikes come standard with 5 levels of pedal assist. Pedal assist will activate if the display is set to level 1 through 5 and the crank arms begin to rotate. The motor will turn on and help you while you pedal to maybe get up a hill or make pedaling a little bit easier when you need it. The X-Peak features the PWR system. Each pedal assist level is now regulated by wattage and speed. This new system applies to both the pedal and throttle experience. In pedal assist 1, there is the least amount of wattage. While riding in PAS1, you will feel light onset of power for more controlled takeoffs. In pedal assist 5, there is the full amount of wattage. While riding in PAS5, you will feel strong onset of power with full torque for a fast and intense experience. When you're in pedal assist 1, your bike will get 6 amps or 218 watts and will cap the speed at 9 miles per hour. On pedal assist 2, your bike will get 10 amps or 546 watts and will remain capped at 15 miles per hour. In pedal assist 3, your bike will get 15 amps or 819 watts and will remain capped at 20 miles per hour. When your bike is in pedal assist 4, your bike will get 20 amps or 1092 watts and will remain capped at 20 miles per hour. And in pedal assist 5, your bike will get the full 24 amps or 1310 watts and will remain capped at 20 miles per hour. If you would like to unlock your XP to reach the cap of 28 miles per hour, making it a class 3 e-bike, enter the settings and cycle to page 8. Once there, press the plus button to change the 032 to 100. Before doing this, make sure to check your local laws on what class of e-bike is allowed in your state. Your XP will come stock with the throttle cap at your pedal assist setting. However, this can be changed via page 22 of the settings. On page 22 of the settings, having the setting at 0 will limit your throttle speed to the level of pedal assist you are in, meaning that in PAS 1 and 2, your speed via the throttle will be capped at 9 miles per hour and 15 miles per hour respectively. If the setting is set to 1, you are able to go up to 20 miles per hour in all PAS settings. But throttle assistance wattage is limited by the PAS level. 
Finally, if the setting is set to 2, you will have the full power of throttle no matter what pedal assist level you are in. Now that your X-Peak is unboxed, set up, and turned on, we can head out for your first ride. Now that we're outside and in our riding gear, let's size up the X-Peak. You will need to raise or lower your seat to a comfortable and safe position. Loosen the seat post clamp, then raise or lower the seat post so that the saddle is right below your hip. Once that is set, lock the seat post clamp back into place. Again, making sure that the seat post is below the minimum insertion point. Your XP comes with an RST Renegade suspension fork that can be adjusted to your style of riding. On the right side of the fork is your lockout adjustment. On the left side of the fork is the preload. First, let's adjust the lockout on the right side of the fork. If you would like a bit more suspension travel and cushion, you will turn the dial clockwise. This can be used if you're riding on a harsher terrain like a rocky trail or single track. If you'd like your ride to be stiffer and more rigid, you will turn the dial counterclockwise. This can be used on smoother terrain like pavement or a smooth trail. On the left side of the fork is the preload dial. This adjustment adds or decreases tension on the fork spring. This adjustment can be tailored to every rider differently. To make the front end stiffer and harder to compress, turn the dial clockwise. To make the front end softer and easier to compress, turn the dial counterclockwise. Your X-Peak will come out of the box with the preload in the lightest setting. Now it's time to mount your X-Peak, but before you do, make sure you have your helmet on. To mount your X-Peak, simply kick up the kickstand, swing your leg over the frame of the bike, place your foot on the pedal, sit on the saddle, and you're ready to go. To launch your X-Peak and start your ride, press down on the pedal and gently place your other foot on the other pedal and begin to pedal. We always recommend starting your ride in pedal assist zero and in the lowest or easiest gear. Once you are comfortable with the bike itself, you can start to add in some assistance from the pedal assist as well as find a gear that you are comfortable with. Along with pedal assist, there are also seven gears to change depending on what kind of riding you are doing. We recommend starting in a lower gear when you start. Then, as you feel more comfortable on the bike, begin to shift to higher gears while also finding the right level of pedal assist. And once you're ready, you can use the thumb throttle to relax your legs a bit. Thanks for riding with us today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our customer support team at contact.electricebikes.com or give us a call at 602-715-0907. Thanks for watching.